Welcome to this presentation on the OFDM modulation process. In this video, we'll explore what the OFDM grid is and how it is modulated to generate the time domain signal. We'll also demonstrate this process through a practical MATLAB simulation. Now, let's get started with the first section, where we'll cover the essentials of OFDM modulation. In the last presentation, OFDM explained, we explored the fundamentals of orthogonal frequency division multiplexing, OFDM. We learned that OFDM is a type of frequency division multiplexing, FDM, that utilizes orthogonal subcarriers to efficiently transmit data. Subcarriers are closely spaced but orthogonal, ensuring they don't interfere with each other. This is achieved by carefully selecting carrier frequencies so that when one subcarrier reaches its peak, the side lobes of all others are at zero. Each subcarrier is a sinusoidal wave that can be modulated using digital modulation schemes such as QAM or PSK. If you're not familiar with these concepts, be sure to watch that video first to better understand the fundamentals before we move forward. One of the key concepts in OFDM is the OFDM grid, which maps all QAM states in a 2D plane, where the x-axis represents time and the y-axis represents frequency. Each square in the grid corresponds to a single QAM state. By selecting all states at a specific frequency, we obtain the set of QAM states that modulate a single subcarrier. On the other hand, taking all subcarrier states at a specific time index forms an OFDM symbol. In an OFDM transmitter, subcarriers are not processed individually. Instead, all subcarriers within an OFDM symbol are modulated together. The next slide illustrates this in detail. This modulation can be represented as matrix multiplication, where the transformation matrix consists of cosine wave carriers in its columns. Each QAM state is multiplied by its corresponding carrier, and all subcarriers are summed to produce the final signal vector. And here's one more trick. If you're familiar with the discrete Fourier transform, DFT, you might recognize that this operation is exactly what the inverse DFT, IDFT, does. It transforms frequency domain data into a time domain signal using a matrix of orthogonal sine and cosine waves. If this concept seems unclear, be sure to check out our video on DFT, where we explain this process in detail. Let's return to the OFDM grid. Now that we know DFT can be used to modulate each subcarrier with its corresponding QAM state within a symbol, we can apply the inverse fast Fourier transform to make this process more efficient. And that's the magic behind the OFDM transmitter. It processes the signal symbol by symbol using IFFT to assign QAM states to each subcarrier. Finally, the outputs of each IFFT operation are concatenated to form the transmitted signal. Now let's take a look at the receiver side. As you might have already guessed, the receiver performs the reverse operation, the FFT, which undoes the IFFT. This process is illustrated on the slide. And that concludes the first part of the presentation. Now let's move on to the next section where I'll guide you through the MATLAB code and demonstrate how the OFDM modulator works in practice. You can also try the code yourself using the link in the description. We begin by clearing the workspace and closing any open plots. Next, we define key parameters. The first is the number of subcarriers, followed by the number of symbols, which together determine the size of the OFDM grid matrix. We then specify the subcarrier spacing in Hertz, which helps calculate the signal sampling frequency. Finally, we set the QAM modulation order to 16. Next, we generate the OFDM grid. We begin by creating random QAM symbols, which for QAM16 are integers ranging from 0 to 15. Then, we apply QAM modulation to map these symbols onto complex constellation points. If you're unfamiliar with QAM modulation, be sure to check out the corresponding video. Now, let's run the code and examine the result. As you can see on the right, the workspace now contains the OFDM grid variable, which appears as a 128 by 7 matrix. Let's take a closer look. The matrix consists of complex numbers, each representing a 16 QAM symbol. Let's generate the constellation diagram and inspect the result.
As expected, the 16 QAM constellation appears as distinct points in the plot. Now let's proceed with OFDM modulation. We begin by generating the IDFT transformation matrix, following the same approach as explained in the DFT presentation. If you're unsure about this step, be sure to check out that video for a detailed explanation. Next, we rearrange the frequency components in the OFDM grid by shifting the positive frequencies to the beginning and the negative frequencies to the end. This step ensures that our results align with MATLAB's built-in functions. Finally, we apply the IDFT by multiplying the OFDM grid with a transformation matrix and reshaping the output into a 1D signal vector. In the next step, we repeat the modulation process using MATLAB's built-in IFFT function. We pass the shifted OFDM grid as an argument and apply MATLAB's IFT shift function to confirm it produces the same result. Finally, we reshape the signal into a 1D vector, just as we did earlier. Now, let's verify if the results are the same by calculating the error as the difference between our two signal vectors and displaying it in the console. As you can see, the error is close to zero, indicating that both methods produce identical results. In the final example, we'll use the built-in OFDM modulator MATLAB function. The first argument is our OFDM grid. The second is the FFT size, which corresponds to the number of subcarriers in this case. The third argument is the cyclic prefix length. For this example, we won't use a cyclic prefix, but we will cover it in a separate video. Finally, we calculate the difference between this method and the IFFT method and display it in the console. As expected, the error is zero, confirming that this method produces the same result as the previous ones. Now let's demonstrate the reverse operation, OFDM demodulation. This time, we will use the OFDM demodulator function with the same arguments as the modulator. You can verify that using the FFT function or DFT transformation matrix will yield the same results. We will also calculate the reconstruction error and display it in the console. As you can see, the error is close to zero, indicating that the demodulation process successfully reconstructs the original 16 QAM states. And that's it for this video. I hope it helped you understand the OFDM grid and how the IFFT operation modulates the signal. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments. You can find the MATLAB code linked in the description. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to like and subscribe for more content on signal processing. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.